Hey, good morning. I am actually at the Hunterton County Park System's uh, Crystal Springs section in Hunterton County, New Jersey. What a beautiful place. Uh, I farmed this property now for three years and unfortunately there was a bidding process and I lost the bid. Um, yeah, it happens, you know. It's uh, approximately 250 acres here and it's gone. Um, but I do still have my hay here and I have to get rid of it. It's got to come off of here by the 1st of January being there's a heck of a pile of hay here um, and uh, if you come over here or maybe come over here over the top maybe you can see it I don't know way down there there's another pile uh, like way over there that's uh, warm season grass this is second cut uh, this is K31, Kentucky 31 grass is no good for feeding animals. When I bought this from the seed company, they said, hey, we'll sell it to you, but we, you have to sign a, a, a form stating that this will never go into animal feed production. So the fellow that rented this away from me, I'm hoping that he doesn't attempt to f feed this to animals because, uh, you know, when it's young and it hasn't seeded, you know, gone to head, it's okay. And when it's a second cut, it's okay to feed to animals. But if it goes to head, there's uh, endophyte uh, and other different uh, funguses and natural, well, natural fungicides or toxins that that grass uh, produces to ward off diseases. This is Kentucky 31, which is the granddaddy of all tall fescues. Uh, used to be widely used in the United States and abroad. Actually, it was brought over from abroad and planted here. It's technically an invasive species of grass in the United States uh, because it doesn't belong here. It was a uh, it was brought here from the Euro by the Europeans. I want to say Scotland, England, and that area. I'm not 100% sure, but I do know that it does not naturally grow here. Uh, it will continue to grow here long after I'm dead uh, because it's this is the type of climate that it likes you know, dormancy in the winter, and in the summertime it thrives uh, in the spring and in the fall. The summertime it will go back dormant when it gets super hot, um, but it makes a good fit for me for the mulch hay production. Uh, produces a lot of tonnage. It likes nitrogen and other things. And guess what? Here comes a tractor. Uh, this is 7530. We're pulling some more Kentucky 31 off of another farm uh, that's down the mountain, which is all still part of the park's system and uh, this was baled a little bit wetter than I'd have liked it to have been baled um, but for the most part it's all good you know this is it, it's kind of wet and gushy but it's got to go down to it's got to get home so it's, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this hay as a base for the truck and that hay will go up on the top and then I'll, I'll treat it more special when I get it when I get it home but today I'm using the Mac Vision and the Peterbilt. Carl has delivered a load of hay today and that load, that truck is now empty so I'm going to bring it up here which is 40 miles from the home farm. Uh, I'm going to bring it up here, load it up for tomorrow's load and then this one here will get unloaded and then I'll, when I get back down there with the Peterbilt then I will definitely be loading it back up up here uh, to bring another round. Cody and Dad are working pretty diligently here with the wagons moving this hay uh, so that I can get it loaded efficiently and out of here in an efficient manner. So we've got about a thousand bales up here that need to come home and uh, I've been working at it a little bit. Dad's going to have it. He's going to load me up pretty quickly and uh, maybe I'll show that as okay, we go. Okay, so I'm back up here. I have the uh, Peterbilt. Ah, uh, the red nose thing. Peterbilt, the red nose truck. Um, it's cold as a witch's tit out there. And I have this pile of hay. Well, I was... <laughs> I was reading some of the comments on the video I posted, well, I'm going to say yesterday. And it, it just, it's amazing. I could... I could be mining gold pulling 20 ounces a minute out of the ground and someone would say I'm doing it wrong. And that's okay. I'm not going to complain about them. But I find it rather comical. Uh, you know, okay, so the spikes weren't going in and out of the tractor very, or out of the bales very easy. And I explained in the video why they aren't. And I get a lot of people saying, oh, well, you need to get a bale grabber. Well, okay, bale grabbers are great. I love them. I think they're great. I don't own one, uh, never used one, but I've seen people use them. And uh, a bale grabber has really short spikes, like 
one footers or the 18 inch spikes on the very bottom row and you'll see maybe four of those spikes in the bottom I don't think there's any more than four in the bottom and then on the sides it has the little grabber gizmos that go like this well that's all great and everything if you're grabbing three bales at a time boom set them on the trailer you back out and you go when they're fresh and new but I run mulch hay 99.9% .9 of my hay production is mulch hay. It sits outside, it gets weathered, water gets in it, it starts to deteriorate. Not bad because I tarp a lot of it, but for the most part you'll get these piles and they get mushy from rain. So that just completely shoots the bale grab part all to hell. Uh, mushroom barn that I deliver to, they have that and unfortunately it just doesn't work. They'll grab them and then the bales will, you know, if they're soft, they'll fall out of those, the grabbers and they'll fall forward and they get broken and that's okay at the mushroom barn, but it's not okay when I'm loading trucks and trailers and things like that. That just doesn't happen. So I've been using spikes and they're on my father's loader or the, not my father's, it's my loader, but the loader that my dad uses all the time it has three spikes in it. Um, a long one and two shorties. So the long one goes through the center and that's where the most of the, the, the pressure is on the spike and the outside ones are short. They're, I want to say they're 24 inch ones. So what that does, and they're wide, and that holds it stability wise. So when he sticks in it and he tilts it back, he's stable, he's got the back stopper for it, and he usually runs two bales on that load, uh, on that when he grabs. That tractor can't handle three. Uh, the bales are too dense, too heavy, too tight to handle three. He loads the way he wants to load. I load very differently than my father does. I grab two bales, grab one, put it on top, go back to pile, grab two more bales, put it in, and I got, you know, then I got, you know, three. So it's two bales, two bales, grab the top, put it up top, go get a third one, boom. And when you're blending in the blending facility or the blending area of the operation, you're going and grabbing one bale at a time. Well, when you're grabbing one bale to sit on top of an, a pile of hay, those grabbers are useless. You have four 18-inch spikes that poop, flop out because you're not able to grab that bottom bale. Um, too easily. Anyway, there might be a, a set of spikes that goes in there. It just won't work for this operation. And I know how people are. They just want to lump all operations into one particular way of doing things and anything outside the box or outside that realm is wrong. Well, if I was making all perfect hay and it was all going into the perfect building and it was perfectly dry from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, the grabber would be the way to go. But I'm not. I have bales of hay that are sitting out in the field right now that he needs all five spikes on his loader to pick up because they were baled damp, they're put on a they're going into the mushroom barn, three, four, like I said in the video yesterday, four or five top bales at a time. They're wet. They make up the difference in the moisture that they take away if I go in there with a load of hay that's 25% moisture. So if I got 12% moisture, I got five that are 25% moisture or so. That makes up the difference. Nobody's getting ripped off at all. Not at all. That's just the way it works. So, oh yeah, ma. Uh, spikes in this particular hay crop are not working right now because of the density of the bale. Give it two months. The hay will dry out, the, you know, where it's drying out. The spikes will go in easier as the year goes on. I've been doing this for nearly 20 years. I've been making big square bales for nearly 20 years. I think I know a little bit about this. Um, you know, and yeah, the grabbers this time of year, perfect. I agree, 100%. Am I cheapening out by buying the spikes? No. I've owned that 7410 since 2005. And that's when I bought that set of spikes for that tractor in 2005. I have broken it, repaired it, rebuilt it, remanufactured it, added to the point where it works wonderfully for what I'm doing. Um... So, yeah, I mean, I hate, to, I hate to come out and have to defend my equipment, um, but 
I like to use the part that works well all year round instead of one that works really good for summer and fall but is absolutely crap for winter and spring. I'd rather deal with a machine that works okay all year round than one that works perfectly a part of the year. And because when you have something that starts to fail in its operation, it starts costing you money. You start dropping bales, you start breaking bales, and when you break a bale, it ain't getting in the mushroom barn. So, you know, you just got to be, you know, be a little more selective in your commenting ability here. Uh, think of the big picture, not just a small piece of pie. So, here comes Cody. He's coming in, and if you see these bales that he's got on there, those things were baled extremely wet. The reason they were baled extremely wet was because I had a rainstorm coming and I had no choice. Um, these bales here were the same cutting, but they were baled almost three weeks later after it was dried out and tedded out three freaking times. It was a real pain in the ass. But we got it done, so that's going on first. And then we're going to stick those on the top of this load. And they can go to the mushroom barn that way. So, anyway... I guess that's the end of this video and my griping, and uh, thanks for watching. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. And don't forget to check out my new channel, Ag Talk in the Raw. Uh, you can just look, look for the link below if I put it in. If I didn't put it in, well, it's not good for me. Just type in Ag Talk in the Raw, and it'll come up. And you can ask me all these lovely questions that you are asking me on this channel there, and I will answer them on Sundays. And I think I'm going to step it up. I think I'm going to go Sundays and Wednesday. And uh, hopefully everybody gets enough, because there's getting a lot of questions in, on each video. Uh, we're looking at 250 questions and things on each video. I can't answer those in 15 to 20 minutes. It's insane how long it is. So just, you know, bear with me. I'm still feeling out that side of the channel. And, uh, yeah, don't forget to check it out. Ag Talking Raw. Link's in the description below. Thanks again.